let's go ahead and talk about maybe bits can help here. Oh God, a girl posting a thread on proof of work networks and uh, some odd behavior that's going on within the proof of work networks. So this is going to be interesting. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. All right. So we're seeing some really odd behavior on proof of work networks this close to the new year. Figured I'd make a thread on what we found for awareness and also to showcase how interesting looking at the bigger picture can be. First, Firo. Someone gave a heads up that there was a giant surge of hash rate and a surge indeed 2.8 tera hash worth when it's normally sitting around 200 giga hash. Now that's a huge jump uh, from 2.8 tera hash to 200 giga hash. Could it be an ASIC, an FPGA? Doubtful, but there's one easy way to tell. Let's go surfing for some other networks. So here's the picture for here, as you can see. And you see a huge, on December 29th, a huge increase to 2.8 terahash a second. That's going to be odd. Normally, if it was hash rate moving from one coin to another, you'd see hash rate moving off. Take a peek at Ethereum. All is quiet and steady. So you can go ahead and like, she has basically Firo network hash rate pulled up. And then over here, you know, the ETH network hash rate, everything looks normal on ETH. Nothing moved off of ETH because a lot of what's going on here uh, when we're taking a look at difficulty is we're trying to see if any large farms are trying to move to another network uh, possibly, right? So at least from my perspective, I'm like, when we're taking a look at the difficulty charts, like during our morning live streams, it's like, well, is there a huge hash rate drop off? you know, a couple tera hash dropping off of ETH and moving, you know, to some other coin. And if they did, did it boost the difficulty up so much that it's not going to be profitable? Or was it successful? Was a large farm or a large operation able to move a majority of their hash rate to a new coin and remain profitable? So taking a look at Ravencoin, a little choppy ocean, but still relatively calm. So you can see here, Ravencoin, nothing, all that. So there's the comments on Ravencoin for you. Not a peep out of Ethereum Classic either. So there you go, there's the chart. Then we take a peek at Cadena. I still need to learn to pronounce this, hang on. 55 petahash a second to 646 petahash a second. This is most likely the gold shell miner being tested out. Remember, we have that new gold shell KD6, I believe it is. Let me scroll up here. Yeah, KD6 launching soon. KD5 is out at 18 terahash a second. 26.3 terahash a second is what the new KD6 will be launched at. So that is what we're assuming at this point is that they're being tested out and that's possible, right? I don't know how you would, it's, it's pretty crazy increase though. So there's that and there's that spike to 646. All right. Then we see this weird algorithm called Octopus that has about one tera hash that moves off right before the surge on Firo. Probably nothing. But what you see here is basically a move off of Conflux over to Firo, possibly. Possibly. But you see it come back and blah, blah, blah. This goes back down. Weird spike. That's what we're trying to hunt down. Then there's Zcash, which is uh, seeing frequent choppy waves. Zcash shares an ASIC with other Equihash coins, but I wouldn't believe they leave the network to mine other coins. Yeah, probably not. Let's keep hunting. All is quiet on the Ergo plat platform front. We know there is FPGA miner for Erg not out in the wild yet but it doesn't appear to be doing any damage so there you go pretty solid right across the board 
All is quiet on Xana's front. Xana uses a variant of ProgPal called ProgPal Z. We see a small amount of slippage, normally a farm turning on or off to get some kickback on utility pricing. And then we take a look at Horizon Global, which has an interesting spike. Check out the time frame for the Firo spike and Horizon spike. So you see 29th, December 2021 at 1610. December 29th, 2021 at 1610. So you see basically the exact, uh, the spike at the exact same time on Firo and Horizon. Weird, we should check out another Equihash coin. Here's Flux, it uses Equihash 125.4, a variant, and notice that very specific time again, 1610 PST, network is normally 1.5 mega hash, and it spikes to four mega hash. Um, so I think, so here's flux. Yeah. So flux, there you go. <clears throat> okay. So let's check another Equihash coin pirate train. What the heck again at 1610, a spike to 273 giga hash. What's interesting is we don't see it in the same behavior in the Komodo platform. So Komodo, for those that don't know, we've talked about it previously. The Komodo platform is interesting because it makes it really easy to create a new coin kind of on the Equihash algorithm while still being able to secure your network because Komodo will secure the network for you while the coin starts. So it's interesting that we didn't see a spike there. But if we zoom out, what happened on December 19th? So here's December 19th on Komodo, 318 mega hash. So something did happen on Komodo. Okay, are we hunting a new machine or is this a new mining farm spinning up? Aeon seems fine though. They're using a variant that doesn't fit into the existing hardware. So that's not surprising. Now, Ogata Girl took a look at Xur and YEC that share an Equihash variant as expected. Nothing of note. Still, this is weird. One thing I love about Minerstat.com is I can quickly check both pool hash rate and network hash rate. Luxor team is pulling in some serious hash, but it's not enough to count for the spike at 1610. Going back to the original hash rate we saw, it was Firo which uses Firo proof of work, a variant of prog pal. It's only mineable on GPUs. And then you have pirate chain, which is mineable on InnoSilicon ASICs and Antminer ASICs. We know InnoSilicon miners has released their new fantasy GPUs, but a farm of those would account for a surge of hash rate on, but uh, wouldn't account for a surge of hash rate on all these smaller coins. Someone who's buying those to mine is going to be focused on another much larger coin, no offense to Firo or Pirate Chain. Let's take a look at the one last Equihash coin. Here's Tent, which uses a 144.5 variant. And what do you know? No, we see a tiny little spike at, you guessed it, 1610, up to 11 kilohash. It's not rental hash rate. It's not coming from nice hash mining or mining rig rental. And spec mining these altcoins isn't really the strategy of a large scale mining operation. Let's go back and look at Cadena. I have a theory. Let's look at the snapshot from the last 60 days. We've got a spike of 1.4 exahash on December 2021 20, at 4 a.m. A spike of one exahash on 17th of December 2021 at 12 a.m. And a smaller spike on the 18th of December at 4 p.m. Let's see if these spike dates overlap with any other coin we are looking at. There's Tent at 31.9 kilohash a second. It normally sits around 10, but that isn't too scary. And then there's Pirate Chain with 61.9 gigahash a second swing on December 8th at 4 p.m. Pretty consistent spikes, actually. 
Horizon has virtually nothing except this large swing at 17 giga hash on the 29th of November. There's a little swing on the 9th of December, but it's not too noticeable. And then there was a hash rate swing on the 19th of December at 4 a.m. Recall the hash rate swing on the 18th of December at 4 p.m. on Cadena. So basically, oh God, a girl here says, I wonder if Gold Shell Miner has an Equihash Miner coming out that they are testing alongside Blake 2S Miner. I wonder if Gold Shell Miner has the out of the box support for both. But this still doesn't account for what is happening with Firo. I am curious about Minerstat.com bug, but that same behavior is pretty similar of a large speculative miner. To put that hash rate in perspective, 2.0 tera hash a second on Firo is about 80,000 GPUs, assuming 35 mega hash a second per GPU on average. We'd see that kind of GPU or FPGA power coming off another network, and there isn't enough GPUs on AWS, GCP, or Azure for open market to rent support that kind of hash rate. This could be an old farm powering back up, but it's weird. It would head over to Firo and not Ethereum. So there you go. Now, Bits is also in on this conversation. And uh, since he's in chat here, he said, has the spike uh, been validated such as exceptional spike? Such an exceptional spike would be the equivalent of nearly five terahash of equivalent ETH performance given the medium difference between Firo and ET hash. I see no other networks lost that much hash. So it makes me wonder if there was a bug or a blip with the nodes. So there's a couple things that could be happening here, of course. Uh, the primary theory, at least in from my understanding, is that there is a bug within Minerstat that showed these spikes. The oddity is though, of course, that these spikes are shown on multiple coins, uh, not only across different time periods, but also uh, specifically there were uh, the, the ones on the December 29th that were all spiking. More than likely, it feels like to me that it could be possibly just a bug within the system there because if we saw that much hash rate, you would feel like even if we didn't see the farm moving off, if it's a new farm or an, or an old farm spinning back up, we would see that farm come back on to the Ethereum network. That would be my assumption. Now, other things that could be going on, of course, is going to be the, you know, speculative mining of large farms trying to test out, you know, what's going to happen post merge. Maybe they want to see if they could move an 80,000 GPU mining farm over to something like Firo. What would that spell out if they are testing that? Probably bad news because they didn't stay on it, right? It's not like this is staying consistent. So if there is some large farm trying to speculative mine something in preparation for the merge to see if it's viable to move a significant amount of hash and remain profitable on one of these smaller cap coins, the answer would probably be no because they didn't remain on those coins. Now, maybe they don't want anybody to see it. Maybe they just want to see how it performs and if it's stable or something along those lines and then be like, okay, we know that this coin, this coin, and this coin are stable and our farm runs at it for you know this amount of hash rate and the difficulty when we move over spikes to this and this is what we can expect. It's possible. Theoretically, though, they would probably be doing that on just paper and they wouldn't actually be, you know, moving hardware over to it. I know that like we have heard of these large mining farms talking about moving to uh, different networks. I believe some was on uh, the BitBoy channel. I forget which miner it was. Uh, but they had just reinvested in a whole bunch of GPUs and they said, well, what about when Ethereum moves to proof of stake or the merge? Funny thing is they said they would move to mining something different like Polygon Matic, which I giggled at. Um, obviously, the mining company has PR, uh, <laughs> PR people that need to do a little bit more research. 
Um, I'd be very scared if that was my company, essentially, uh, and I would be very disappointed in their response there personally, but I thought it was pretty funny. I'll try to find it for reference and add it down to the description below because it was a pretty funny clip. Um, what else could it be? Could we be seeing the testing of new miners on the network? You know, I think in the case of Cadena, it makes sense. We do have the new Cadena miners coming out. They're really expensive and really hard to get a hold of, obviously. Um, I don't really know anybody that's gotten one, even some of the old ones. I know, like, I think Vosk had, like, a KD box, so he's lucky there. Uh, I know you can purchase the KD box in, like, bundles for, like, 14 grand on BT Miners, which has been a sponsor of the channel, so you can check those out as well. But I thought that this was super interesting. If you guys want to deep dive into it, I'll have it linked for you guys down in the description below and in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Like I said, to me, it doesn't necessarily feel like it's viable. I feel like you would see, look, if you have just, just saying, like if you have five terahash of Ethereum mining performance, uh, why are you just going to turn it on, blip it on to a coin and blip it right off? And then why didn't the Ethereum uh, move on? My allergies are absolutely terrible. So I'm trying to hold back sneezes and like all that stuff. So bear with me as I try to hold it back. I may not be able to, but it's causing the little weird like um, stuff going on. We have like crazy uh, mountain cedar right now. So there you go. I can't believe the KD box is selling for $9,000 on resellers. Neither can I. It is absolutely insane. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show. Every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here. Or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.